But I'd like to start with the first transparency. About in the early 1950s, the radio telescopes started observing the sky, and they found sources of radio pairs, uh, spots of radio emission on the sky. I remember sitting in the Caltech a symposium room and uh, scientists saying, uh, <clears throat> well, they're paired across galaxies, but you should not jump to the conclusions that they're associated with galaxies. Eventually, of course, they saw these thin uh, connections going from the, from the central galaxy out to the radio lobes on either side. Now, I, I know this is a beautiful picture. This is a VLA picture, the best available presently. But I think the two important things you should draw from this first slide is the fact that the, uh, this material is actually being injected. That's about the only way you could get this uh, kind of configuration. And secondly, is that it's coming, this large amount of material, is coming from this very small active spot. Uh, this is Cygnus A. And so I think we start out with the knowledge the galaxies, unlike assumed in the early days, are not creating star clouds and uh, moving around, but they actually have very active centers, mysterious active centers. For me, was the, the peculiar galaxies which were featured in that atlas of 333 of them, they, they were disturbed in the center. They looked as though they were exploding or ejecting. And so the obvious thing to do was to look around to see whether there are any of these radio sources in the center. I was also helped because a friend of mine in Argentina said, she checked there are a lot of radio sources around those galaxies. And, <laughs> And so when I, when I looked at them, I saw, in fact, that they were paired across the exploding galaxies. That made a lot of sense. They were being ejected, and in the process of ejection, the galaxies were being disturbed. So the chances of that association being accidental was only about one in a million. between them. And this is one of the objects that turned up. There were two very strong radio sources, those small uh, dots there. And the other one of them was in the area form an obvious pair. And then when you look at the brightest galaxy in the area, you see that in 1767 falls directly between them. Now, at that time, all I knew was that those were quasars, because some of these radio spots then became associated with optical objects. They look like stars. But as you know, very high risk, the lines are different to the Earth, which is usually interpreted as, or up to then has been interpreted as meaning they were receding from us with a high velocity. Of them being that close together in redshift. 
was very, very small. So that meant that the, the pairs associated and the pairs associated with the central galaxy and the conclusion was that they were objective. Now, this, the, these kinds of objects, this was published from the Armenian uh, journal uh, because it was obviously not going to get into the activity journal. And uh, later, it was published in the activity journal, but not much attention to it. Nevertheless, this kind of material started tying up and tying up. Right. 
uh, telescopes came along, they picked out the quasar very, very well. And you'll see this now with sort of a Rosetta Stone to make progress in this field. Uh, and the, the thing uh, we did next, our colleague joined me from the Max Planck Extraterrestre, and uh, we looked at all the features. Because the features are such uh, strong X-ray sources, we were able to get almost a complete sample of the brightest features from 8th apparent magnitude to about 12.9. And we could, the, the X-ray sources were then automatically reduced by the reception program so that the list, they were listed, the point source, X-ray sources in the vicinity of these features were listed. And what you see here is these points going up and to the right are excess X-ray sources around the secret. The dashed line indicates the control field, uh, fields away from the secret galaxy. So we could see right from here that this was an excess of point X-ray sources around these active secret galaxies. You don't need to be a rocket scientist to know that these are quasars. And everybody knew they were quasars. But uh, the question, of course, was since they didn't have red tips, you could sort of ignore it. The um, statistics that we did on this was a, was a seven and a half signal result, i.e., the chance of this being an accident would be one in over 10 million. <laughs>